Hi, this is CJ and this is Knowledge Catalog. For this video, we are going to talk about the characteristics of a good research problem. The first one is that the problem can be stated clearly and concisely. Unless a problem can be stated clearly and concisely, it is probably a poor problem or a non-problem. The best way to test the problem statement is to write it into a concise sentence or paragraph and to share it with others. If the problem cannot be stated in a clear paragraph, it has difficulties and will not endure as a suitable problem. Of course, it is not easy to express complex issues in simplistic terms, and it may take many weeks and countless drafts before the statement is satisfactory. Good critics are essential. If your spouse or mother cannot understand it, it is probably flaky. The second characteristic of a good research problem is that the problem generates research questions. The problem should generate a number of more specific research questions. These turn the problem into a question format and represent various aspects or components of the problem. The research questions make the more general statement easier to address and provide a framework for the research. Formulating these questions can be a challenge, particularly specifying them at the right level of abstraction. The third characteristic is that it is grounded in theory. Good problems have a theoretical and or actually conceptual frameworks for their analysis. They relate the specifics of what is being investigated to a more general background of theory which helps interpret the results and link it to the field. The fourth characteristic. It relates to one or more academic fields of study. Good problems relate to academic fields which have adherence and boundaries. They typically have journals to which adherence relate. Research problems which do not have clear links to one or two such fields of study are generally in trouble. Without such a field, it becomes impossible to determine where, in the universe of, prob of knowledge, the problem lies. The fifth characteristic. It has basis on research literature. Related to the former points, a well-stated problem will relate to a research literature. Tight problems often relate to a well-defined body of literature written by a select group of researchers and published in a small number of journals. With some problems, it might at first be difficult to establish the connections and literature base, but there should be a base somewhere. You will, you will surely find it. Sixth characteristic. It has potential significance or importance. This is... This is the important so what question. Who cares once you solve the problem? Assume that you have solved the problem and answered the questions and then ask yourself if you are any further ahead. At the very least, the problem must have importance to the researcher, but ideally it should also be of consequence to others. Number seven, it is doable within the time frame or budget. I'm sorry, that is supposed to be a T. Okay, so budget. There are logistic factors in terms of your ability actually to carry out the research. There is no point pursuing a problem which is not feasible to the research. To research. Do not do a study of education in India unless you have the means to go there and collect data, which may require years to collect. This factor ex helps explain why few these few theses relate to longitudinal data. The only exceptions come from research shops where there is a long history of collecting and studying data on a defined population. And lastly, the last characteristic of a good research problem is that sufficient data is available or can be obtained in case it is not yet available. In some cases, there are insufficient data to address the problem. Historical persons may have died, archival materials may be lost, or there may be restrictions on access to certain environments. 
As noted, it is, it, it is so difficult actually to conduct research on a distant country unless you can go there and collect local data. One underused approach is to use an existing database. Some data banks have been developed over many years and contain many opportunities for exploration of new questions and issues. This is CJ. And that has been one more video for the Knowledge Catalog, Education Solutions. Thank you so much.